So it's not just by chance that we've put this subject right at the start of this physics section. And the reason is, is because calculating pressures in the salt water to an instructor is just as basic as learning how to put, well, put your kit together for an ordinary diver. So without knowing how to calculate this, you're going to really struggle with all of the questions on any PADI physics exam that deals with the effects of pressure. Now, the good news about this is it's really easy. Actually, it's so easy, it's the very first subject that anyone ever encounters on their open water course. It's right up there on the first page of section one in the open water manual. So there's nothing new here. Um, it's just about you focusing, focusing on some really simple rules. Now, a few years ago, we put a video up on YouTube that made this subject really simple. I'm going to show it to you right now. So take a look at it. And then when you've finished, we can have a chat about it. And then we'll talk about some of the confusing jargon that you might have come across. So see you in a couple of minutes. So I just want to talk about pressures uh, underwater. And the reason I do want to talk about them is because I do find that people that are doing paddy exams often get these questions wrong, even though they do understand the subject. So in this video, I'll quickly talk about um, pressures underwater, and we'll also look at the reason why some people are getting these answers wrong in some, in some exams. But we're going to start off with pressures underwater in salt water. And we can see from this that um, the ambient pressure, the total pressure, is made up of two components. One is atmospheric pressure, which is just one atmosphere. It's the weight of the, uh, of the atmosphere of the air onto the uh, Earth's surface. And the other is made up of gauge pressure, which is the weight of the water that, uh, that we're diving in. And if we think about this, it's a little bit like a, an energy bill, like a gas bill, an electric bill, you know, where you've got like a standing charge of X amount, which, uh, which is going to be the same wherever you are and, uh, or whatever you use. And then the, uh, then the rest of the bill is taken up with the energy that you use. You add the two together, it's the total amount. And if we look at this, it, it's very similar because the atmospheric pressure is going to be the same whether we're diving in fresh water, salt water, it's always going to be just one. And then here we've got the gauge pressure. Now gauge pressure, the word gauge is a great word to use here, isn't it? Because to find out what the gauge pressure is, we simply need to look at the gauge when we're diving. For example, if we was in 26 meters of water, we would look at the gauge and we'd see two numbers, a two and a six, 26. We put a decimal point in the middle and we get 2.6 atmospheres. That's the gauge pressure at 26 meters, 2.6. If we was at 15 metres, we'd do the same. We'd see the numbers 1 and 5, put a decimal point, and we've got um, 1.5. So to find the ambient pressure, all we need to do is add the two together. We've got 1 for um, uh, atmospheric pressure. If we was at 26 metres of water, that'd be 2.6. Add the two together, ambient pressure is 3.6. Now, it's crucial we understand this. Crucial why? Because on other questions on um, dive physics exams, 45% um, of questions are made up about the effects of pressure. You know, questions like, how big does a balloon get if we move it around underneath the water? Um, how much air does a diver breathe at different depths? Or maybe even, you know, partial pressures. They're all calculated by using ambient pressure in salt water. So it's crucial we get that. Now, we'll move on to fresh water. And again, we can see that uh, the pressures in fresh water are made up of the same two components, atmospheric and gauge pressure. Uh, atmospheric pressure, of course, is going to be the same. But it's very rare that you're going to find a, a question on any exam that talks about anything other than gauge pressure. If it's in fresh water, really the question nearly always is going to be, what is the gauge pressure? Now, because fresh water is a little bit lighter than salt water, we have to make an adjustment. So let's just look and see how we can do this. If we use the example um, that we're in salt water, and we want to know what is the gauge pressure at 27 metres of water, we, um, we just put a decimal point in. So in the sea, gauge pressure would be 2.7 atmospheres at 27 metres. 
Now, in fresh water, we need to have to make an adjustment, adjustment at a ratio of uh, a rate of 1.03. So we divide 2.7 by 1.03, and we'll find that we get the answer 2.62. Now, um, some people I know use a different number. They use 0.97. They times 2.7 2 by 0.97. It's exactly the same calculation, actually, but I just prefer to use the same number every time, 1.03. Um, so that's the answer to that. So why do people get these questions wrong? So clearly, if we were to be asked the question, what is the gauge pressure at 27 metres of water, we can't answer the question. We need to find out, is it salt water or fresh water? So first of all, look to see what the question is asking. Is it gauge pressure or ambient pressure? Okay. And then secondly, look to see if it's in salt or fresh, because you can't answer the question without knowing that. But it's all in the question. So, as you've seen, it is a fairly important subject, but the seawater pressures, well, they're fairly easy to work out. Now, the stuff about fresh water, it, it isn't needed very often, although most Paddy physics exams will have one question that will ask something like, what is the gauge pressure in fresh water at a depth of oh, 16, 24, 27 metres or whatever. It's only then that you might need a calculator to work out by dividing the sea pressure by 1.03. Now, I don't know if you've noticed in the past, but some instructors, they like to use the word ambient pressure and others use absolute pressure even though it's for the same thing. It's the same, you might find the same on PADI exams. Sometimes you'll come across the word ambient, another time you'll see absolute. Now, whilst some instructors might insist on using one word or the other, the bottom line is that they're both the same thing. Now, while we're on this subject as well, you probably have noticed that pressure is sometimes followed by either ATM or ATA. Again, some people get stressed about arguing which is which, and they, but they really do mean the same. ATM stands for atmospheres, and ATA stands for atmospheres absolute. Now, actually, I did Google this difference, and I found myself on a discussion board where people were contradicting each other. Um, they were arguing which one was which should be used, but I think for some people, the time really is to chill out and just get on with life. So once you're an instructor, it's best to keep information simple and try not to confuse your own students too much. Okay, so I put up a few questions in the next section. Let's see how you get on with them. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again in the next video.